Good evening, everyone. This is Living Waters Audio Bible Study, and today we're going to dig into Romans the seventh chapter. Last time we covered an introduction of sorts and lightly went over verses one through six. So today uh, we're going to, in one slide, hopefully, just recap and continue on. Verses five and six are critical to the rest of the chapter. Now we're going to get into the meat of this chapter here. Paul starts us out in verses 1 through 6 with an analogy about marriage under the law. The purpose of that analogy was not to give a New Testament lesson on marriage and divorce, but to set the stage for these critical points of understanding about salvation. Verse 5 says, For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Verse 6, but now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Now Paul uses here past tense when he refers to the flesh, which is the Greek word sarx, S-A-R-X, and being um that is obvious here that he is not just talking about uh, our physical body because he says when we were in the flesh as if he's no longer in the flesh and we know that's not possible if he were talking just about the physical body but he is talking here about the deeper meaning of being in a state of opposition to God the fleshly mind the carnal spirit the part of us that only thinks of self which is always in opposition to a holy God. But as Paul brings out in this chapter and in the next chapter, Christ has conquered the flesh. He hearkens back to the idea of what type of fruit we are bearing, fruit unto death or fruit that shows a holy life. Verse six, when he says, but now we are delivered from the law and consequently the motions of sin, which were by the law, which should no longer hold us as slaves or dominate us, but we should serve God in the newness of the spirit. Instead of having a disobedient spirit, we should have a submissive, obedient spirit to the will of God. And this is what Paul is trying to get across here. A couple of points for those that are of the view that this chapter speaks of Paul's current experience in salvation. Uh, number one, I'm not of that view. So if you are, you will probably be very strongly opposed to my comments on this. And number two, also keep in mind that not all biblical scholars see this passage as a testimony of Paul's life after conversion. Uh, often is taught in a one-sided manner as a universal Christian interpretation of the passage, and that is very far from the truth. Those of us who are teachers of the holiness tradition know that we are being perfected in our lives, and that a person can sin, but not dwell in sin. And the perfection does not mean flawlessness but being complete in Christ and complete in our love for God, um, enabling us by God's grace to overcome temptation. Uh, if we were not able to overcome or our life were to be just simply powerless over sin and temptation, uh, then uh, the other encouragements in scripture not to fall, uh, instruction how not to fall are useless. Uh, God never tells us to do something uh, that is impossible. Verse 7, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law said, Thou shalt not covet. Verse 8, but sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin is dead. Verse 9. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. 
The Asbury Commentary tells us that in Scripture, sin is not just an evil act, but it is talking about the sin nature, the principle of sin, the power that causes mankind to sin. Some teachers have described this as inbred sin. Nevertheless, it's clear here that Paul is taking, talking about uh, the power that causes sin. So in uh, this verse, Paul is explaining that there was nothing wrong with the law itself, but it did teach me right from wrong and what is acceptable to God. He says, I had not known lust except the law spoke against it. But it was sin that produced in me all manner of evil desire and covetousness. Verse 8, uh, I will say that it's interesting that the word uh, labano is used uh, to, for take. He said sin taking occasion by the commandment because this, this really presents an image of taking something by the hand or laying hold on something in order to use it. And, and I like that analogy or the word that's used here because sin, he's saying, took hold of him and used him. Uh, like you would a spoon and cooking or a wrench to work on a car, uh, so sin took hold of him. And so in essence, Paul is saying that sin took him and used him and every uh, accurate view uh, this is a very accurate view of what sin uh, does. Uh, for the, Without the law, he says, sin was dead. This doesn't mean sin did not exist. But what it does mean that his knowledge of sin had no power over him had it not been for the law. In verse 9, said, I was alive without the law. So like all of us, there was an innocence about sin that we had at one point in our lives. But when the knowledge of what we were doing became a full knowledge that what we were doing was sinful, when we saw the requirements of God, the knowledge of sin became alive to us and real and spiritual death was a result. Verse 10, and the commandment which was ordained to life I found to be unto death. Remember the whole design of the law was to bring us closer to God, but it became a death trap for him because he didn't follow it and couldn't follow it. Verse 11, for sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me. Again, sin was the problem not the law. Sin is always deceptive, especially when we don't walk in the knowledge of what we have that's right. Verse 12, wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Verse 13, was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. The law did this. It made sin exceedingly sinful because now as an individual, I understand what God requires and I see how short I fall of his requirements. Verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Here Paul is explaining why sin was such a problem. Again, it's not the law, but it's the flesh. Not just the physical power, but the power of the flesh, the influence of the flesh, the sinful nature, uh, or sarkinos, uh, as this word is used here. Uh, which is a derivative of the word sark, sarks, um, the soul to the devil, a slave under sin. And here Paul begins to, to tell us the, the in the present tense uh, what where um, 
some of these problems began. But up until this time, Paul has been talking about his experience of what sin did to him and how it came alive to him in the past tense. He's explaining what his experience was under the law. Now here, he simply switches his perspective here to make his point. And we've heard people do this when they're explaining something or telling a great story about something that happened in the past. I'm coming out of this bar, right? And this guy walks up, you know, we've heard people say things like that. Um, that's not their present state, but they're telling you a past event or even instructional. They'll say, uh, okay, you're walking to the corner. Now you're making a right. And when you walk 10 blocks, et cetera, et cetera. This is all Paul is doing here. It is called historic present tense or literary present. And um, I'm leaving a link on the presentation uh, for those of you that might like to study uh, this grammatical um, usage. So that ends our study for today. And uh, we're going to continue on on the next uh, part of this wonderful chapter that Paul really gets into his um, problems and sin. Thank you for joining us today at Living Waters Bible Study. Don't forget, read your Bible and pray every day and you will grow. If you have any questions, you can email me at grsem7 at gmail.com. God bless you is my prayer.